Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech. Today what we're looking at is a unit uh, that is overcharged. It's an R22 unit. Uh, we know that it's overcharged because we're taking a subcoiling reading on the, uh, the liquid line. All right. We, we know we have to check the charge with subcooling because it's an outdoor condenser running in cooling and uh, the indoor unit has a TXV on it. All right. So we have our temp probe right here and it's measuring right at about 90 to, 90 to 90.5 degrees, okay? Um, and we have our head pressure side, our liquid side. If we look at the pressure, we're at 224 PSIG, all right? We follow that into the green saturated temperature, all right, which is the inner saturated temp. That is 110 degrees, all right? So we take 110 degrees minus 90.7, and we're at about 19.3 uh, degrees of subcooling. All right, 110 degrees saturated temp minus 90 point, it was 90.7, okay? Uh, so we have almost 20 degrees of subcooling. All right, the saturated temperature that this gauge is trying to read is actually the temperature of the refrigerant in the middle of the coil at a saturated state where it's liquid and vapor at the same time. After it comes out over here, is where you have a temperature decrease in liquid form okay so it should be completely liquid if you have sub -coin, it's going to be completely liquid coming out and this is just too much sub -coin, all right so what's going to happen with that is the unit will run less efficiently uh, you're going to be drawing more amperage for your outdoor unit here your txv may hunt a little bit um, um just <clears throat> just not as bad as you would having low superheat but it it will work for the most part uh but you're going to be paying too much for electricity basically all right it's not doing the compressor any favors at all all right um so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh pull some of this charge out all right to pull the charge out what we need to do is we need to weigh our recovery bottle first so here's our recovery bottle right here we're going to put it on the scale All right. And if we look right here, we have, uh, we're going to actually zero it out first. Okay. We're going to zero it out first. And then we're going to put our recovery bottle on. That will give us the total weight of the recovery tank. The total weight is 56 pounds and four ounces. All right, so if we have 56 pounds and four ounces, what we know about the recovery tank is this is a 50 pound recovery tank. All right, so it can actually uh, hold up to 40 pounds. But uh, if you look at something like DuPont's uh, recovery uh, technique online, uh, they recommend for their tanks that you only put about 38 uh, pounds in a 50 pound cylinder. You should never fill it up past 80 percent. All right. So that's that. That's the uh, weight of the refrigerant inside, which you have liquid and then the vapor on the top. Um, as well as that, you have the tear weight of the tank. And the tear weight of the tank will be stamped either on this side or on, on the other side. Right here it says TW, okay, is 28.5. So 28.5 uh, plus 38 is going to net you uh, 66.5. So 66.5 is the total amount that we're allowed to have in that tank if you zero the scale out before you put the recovery tank on. And you see that right now we have 56 pounds, uh, three ounces or four ounces roughly. Okay, so we know that we can put almost 10 more pounds in this recovery tank. There's no off switch on this particular tank um, in order to shut it off. You need to know, you know, what the maximum weight is. All right. So we don't need the recovery system for R22 to dump the uh, R22 into the recovery bottle. We just use the liquid pressure. So uh, how do I know that? Uh, the room where we're, well, where we're located right now, whether you're outside or you're inside, this particular one, I just built this for the inside here. Um, but the recovery uh, bottle has been at a roughly about uh, 70 degrees or so, okay? So that's the recovery bottle. The And the recovery bottle is at its saturated state. So if the, if the recovery bottle is at 70 degrees, 
I know that the pressure is 125 PSIG in that bottle right now. Whether that bottle was in my truck or if it was in the in a, a room somewhere, wherever it's been for the last hour, say, or two hours, that you'll be able to tell what pressure is in that bottle. Since that bottle is 70 degrees, and if you look at 70 degrees right here, okay, we're just using this gauge as a pressure chart, just so you know. We're not looking at the system running right now. I don't want you to pay attention to the dial. I just want you to look at that 70 degrees. If you follow it up to 120, 121 PSIG, that's the amount of force that the vapor is exerting in that bottle right now. All right, we know that our head pressure is at 225. So we know our head pressure is higher than the pressure that's in that bottle right there. So we can actually dump from the liquid into uh, that recovery bottle. Now this works with R22. Uh, I would not do this with 410A because the pressure in the bottle will be different than the uh, head pressure uh, and you might not be able to actually push it in and it, and it won't work right. But R22, we can do that. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to take our yellow service hose right here and we're gonna attach it to the recovery tank. Now we're going to turn the tank on. Now I'm going to put my gloves on. Or maybe you want to have gloves on the whole time, uh, just in case you're not sure if refrigerator's coming out, just keep the gloves on the entire time. So before um, we had this yellow service hose, there was nothing in it. All right. Uh, now we have attached to the recovery bottle, and what we want to do now is purge the air out of the line. Okay. So we know that the air is out of line because I just saw a little bit of refrigerant vapor there. Um, that's the amount allowed that you're allowed to vent just from working on the systems. They don't want you to be putting air into your system or non-condensables uh, into your tank, stuff like that. All right, so um, I want to make sure I've got clean refrigerant coming from the unit into my recovery tank. All right, so just for now, I'm going to remove this, all right, just so it doesn't fall again. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and open my liquid and I'm going to dump it into my service which will go into the tank so we should see the needle lower all right and it's not going to take much because you got to remember this liquid line uh, is going to be jam-packed full of liquid refrigerant versus vapor line you know it take a lot more uh, time to move refrigerant around but you have to use the liquid line because it's high enough in pressure all right so let's just see uh, how much we just took out right there, okay? You want to let it uh, run for a little bit. It's always best practice to try to let it run for, you know, five, at least five, ten minutes maybe after you make a, make a change. Um, obviously, we don't have that that much time, you know. Um, you don't want to be watching like an hour and a half long video. Um, but uh, I just want to give you the general gist, you know. So right now, our head pressure for the liquid, we're at 108. Uh, PSI, I'm sorry, 108 degrees uh, of uh, saturated temperature R22. Over here, we're at about 73 degrees. Once again, you want to give it a little bit of time to get back in its groove so, it, so um, you know, you have an accurate reading. If you take your reading right away, it's not going to be completely accurate. But just to give you an idea, roughly 108 degrees saturated at about 93 degrees that is, uh, we have eight, seven, 15 degrees right now of subcooling. So we just took out that roughly about four to five degrees of, uh, of actual subcooling. So that quick, just like that, okay? Now this unit on the rating plate back here, okay? The rating plate's back there. This unit, instead of calling from somewhere between eight to 12 degrees of subcooling, this unit's actually calling for 15. All right, so we wanna maintain it about 15 within three degrees above or below that. I like to go just a hair above, maybe 16 uh, or 17 or so, all right? So we've given it a little bit of time, and eh, 109 saturated, 93, all right, so 16, so we're at about 16 degrees now, instead of closer to 20, which will be good. So we're going to be running more efficiently now. Um, so this will be good for the building owner, the homeowner, uh, be a little bit more efficient for them. All right. 
Uh, so it's not, you don't want to just check the charge on the vapor side, all right? You want to check if it, if it has to do with superheat. If, you, if your indoor unit has a piston or, um, or an orifice, you know, they're the same thing, piston orifice. If you do that, then you have, if they, if they have that, you're going to need to check superheat, and that's on this side. Subcooling is taken on the liquid side. All right? So that's how you do it. Hope you enjoyed yourself. See you next time. AC Service Tech.